Jaime Fagundes from the University of A Coruña in Spain. Happy to be here. Sorry I cannot be there in person. Uh, but anyway, I want to thank Mike Piri for the invitation to participate. And um, I'm going to present uh, our most recent study on Erika species uh, in collaboration with my colleague Pilar Diaz from the University of A Coruña. So the title is The Distant Tale of Two Travelers. Comparative phylogeography of Erika Tetralix and Erika Macallana in Spain and Ireland in West Europe. And it's, of course, about Erika species, but also it's about one quite distinct special biogeographic pattern which uh, we can find here in Europe for uh, several plant and animal species like Geomalacus. Uh, maculosus, which is a slug that lives in uh, the northwest of the Iberian Peninsula, but then there is uh, some small populations on Western Ireland. And this biogeographic pattern is what it's been called uh, the Lusitanian distribution of uh, several species of uh, plants and animals, which has puzzled. Um, uh, researchers for nearly two centuries and uh, there's been work going on on this biogeographic uh, pattern on this uh, set of species and most of the recent outcomes just describe uh, something like you can read there for Geomalacus that there is uh, low genetic variation and no evidence of uh, glacial uh, refugium for this species and um, it has been suggested for Geomalacus and for other species as well that this may be the result of recent introduction, introductions which could be uh, human assisted. Anyway, we work on um, a group of Erika species which belong to a uh, well-supported clade. Uh, you can see from our uh, um, previous study with Anna Laura Mugravi the coupler. Mike Piri was involved as well. Uh, it includes the um, distinct uh, glandular um, species Erika ciliaris and also Erika macallana and Erika tetralix um, and also the rare uh, endemic Erika de Valencis. This clade in here, so the two species that we selected are Erika tetralix and Erika macallana. As you can see, Erika tetralix um, is a quite widespread species in Western Europe, whilst um, Erika Macallana is quite rare. It occurs only in the north part of the Iberian Peninsula and some uh, spots in some, some uh, located populations in Western Ireland. They are uh, morphologically similar. Uh, there are a few uh, diagnostic characters on um, uh, ovary hairiness and also stem hairiness and the this the the um, uh, uh, philotaxis and well uh, shape size of the anthers and and others and um, interestingly uh, you may find hybrids especially in Irish populations where it the, the, the hybrid Erika Stuarti is quite common and then it occurs uh, much more rarely in, in the north of Spain with quite intermediate characters. So about the ecology of the species, both the species occur in bogs and very humid, wet soils and um, especially Erika Macallana uh, it covers large areas within the narrow coastal mountain ranges uh, at about from sea level to about thousand meters um, above sea level and um, 
it's dominant in this type of wet heatlands which are considered are uh, important for uh, biodiversity conservation and uh, commonly used as rangelands for different herbivores mainly um, <coughs> free roaming uh, wild ponies okay so in this study we collected samples from both areas uh, of the two species which lived uh, uh, along each other in um, the north of Spain and in West Ireland where there are four main populations two of them which have let's say two subpopulations so you may consider four or uh, six populations and uh, so we, we perform our study, our analysis using SNPs um, from um, final data set of 53 Erika Tetralix and 61 Erika Macayana plants. So here are the results. Uh, for Erika Tetralix, if you look at this uh, structure outcome, uh, you can see the um, the the analysis retrieved three uh, three main clusters so values were similar for k2 and k3 so we selected uh, k3 and you can see uh, the blue one corresponds to irish populations and then the green one from uh, plants from uh, galicia and um, the red one from plants from asturias which are the two uh, regions in North Spain that were uh, sampled. Um, if you look at the uh, PCA that we also perform, you can see that the main uh, PC here, the, the, uh, the, the, the main principal component, uh, discriminates the two main region, uh, Ireland here on the left, and Spain uh, here on the right and then the second PC uh, divides the um, Spanish population into Asturias and Galicia just as we saw for the structure analysis and then if you add um, the third component uh, you can see mostly the the four um, Irish populations can be recognized and uh, and yeah that's the outcome from the PC analysis and we also perform uh, phylogeny using maximum likelihood um, I collapsed um, all the clades uh, which were uh, um, which, which I included only Galicia or Asturias or any of the Irish populations, you can see here. So, so what it looks like is that we have uh, Galicia as, um, at the base of this clade and nested within it, uh, a new clade with uh, Asturias um, clade as sister to the Irish um, of the Irish clay and then within the Irish clay you can see Kerry at base which is down south and then uh, there's a like a grade uh, from south to north from Kerry a uh, Galway including the small population of Karna and then Mayo and uh, Donegal up here um, with uh, with with good support for most of the populations. Um, then we have the Macayana results, which look nothing like that. So first for the structure, uh, you can see again uh, K equals two and K equals three. We decided to uh, we 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 choose. Uh, we chose um, k equals three and found three main clusters which correspond. One of them 
mostly with uh, the green one with Asturias population and a red one that corresponds mostly to Galician uh, population. But then we have third cluster which is pure only for Galway population. Uh, you can see that the other Irish populations are either um, the Galician cluster, the red one for Kerry, Donegal, and the small population of Karna, or the Asturias one for um, Mayo. If we look at the PCA, uh, in this case, the first uh, PC discriminates Galway population from all others. Uh, the second one uh, kind of um, divides uh, Galicia and Asturias and the, the different Irish populations are uh, clustered but in different positions. You can see Mayo here together with the Asturian plants or uh, Donegal close to the Galician ones and then Kerry, which is somewhere up in here, and then again for the uh, third uh, PC, uh, it also discriminates uh, Donegal down here from all others, and again uh, Kerry. If we look at the phylogeny, the thing changes. Uh, you can see at base uh, all these samples are from Asturias, and um, the Galician uh, samples are nested uh, within that clade and then um, the different populations from Ireland are all in different places on this um, uh, on the tree so you can see all of them are well supported they have 100% um, uh, support for Mayo, Kerry, Donegal and Galway but uh, Karna which is here uh, it stands alone sister to well uh, a, another uh, plant from uh, Galicia so uh, we don't have a strong support except on these basal clades and uh, well some of them like here Galway uh, but the thing is, uh, all of them, all of these uh, clades are um, not nested, not uh, together in a single clade, but in different clades as we saw for the structure analysis. We also calculated the, uh, the genetic assemblage from the F FST uh, values. Uh, so. Uh, as expected for Erika Tetralix, you can see the low value, so high similarity between the Irish populations up here and also same thing among the Iberian populations down here. And then you see the higher differences uh, um, in crossing uh, the Spanish and the Irish populations. But uh, if we look at the results for Erika Macayana, it's quite a different thing. Again, uh, populations from Spain, they are all similar and have the lowest values for FST pairwise. But then uh, populations among um, Irish, the, the values among uh, Irish populations are the highest values. Uh, so. Uh, Donegal and Kerry uh, are the show the highest values of the, the the higher differences less similar less similar uh, uh, genetic um, assemblage so from all this um, we concluded that first Erika Tatralix and Erika Macayana are two distinct species we don't have problem with that. Uh, this is suggested that there could be problem due to hybridization or uh, we haven't seen anything similar. All the hybrids can can be uh, um, 
easily detected and uh, we we think that there are only F1 uh, hybrids. Now, uh, Erika Tetralix shows, let's say, a normal standard pattern for isolation by distance, which is congruent with the south to north um, post-glacial migration, like we see for many species in Western Europe. And um, you can see that both comparing Spain and Ireland, or even within Ireland, uh, you can see that um, uh, south to a uh, north gradient. Then, Erika Macallan is a different thing. The biogeographic pattern uh, is not consistent with uh, a vicariance or with a migration uh, south to north uh, as for Erika tetralix. And we conclude that these populations are um, different uh, independent colonization events that took place. Uh, we don't know when, but we suspect that this could be a quite uh, recent introductions or at least post-glacial introductions. The Roundstone Bog population in Galway, the main population in Galway, is, is very special, is unique on its um, uh, genetic um, assemblage. Um, but it is nested with the other samples within the tree, so uh, there's nothing that indicates that that could be the result of a uh, um, in situ survival through glaciation. And the most likely explanation for us is that uh, we haven't sampled the source of this population and we have some in mind which we think uh, could be uh, the origin of that population. So we find no support for glacial refugium uh, for these species. And uh, yeah, that's our main, the main thing. And uh, again, thanks for uh, listening and here for questions or comments. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jaime. And uh, yeah, that was that was fascinating. I've got a kickoff question. If uh, if no one else wants to immediately go in, have you got any idea about the relative ages of the the origins of uh, of Irish clades between these two species? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Well, it's it's really weird to listen to myself <laughs> giving a speech, but um, anyway, uh, yeah, we. So this technique, the SNPs that we've used, uh, it's from what I've seen uh, has uh, rarely been used for uh, for biogeography analysis, and um, the, there's been some uh, someone has suggested us to how can we infer the the ages from those. Um, branch lengths of the trees but we actually we we don't have uh i don't i i don't think we can um estimate in in any way uh, because there is no way to calibrate for as as far as i know <laughs> uh, we don't know the rate of um um changes on on, on those uh, uh particular sequences and uh so so yeah at, at this point i don't think we we don't even know if uh, those um long branches that we found for the irish populations uh, have a meaning in terms of time lag since uh um that colonization happened so so no the answer is we don't know <laughs> Because there, there's there are some some uh, some hypotheses out there 
for uh, that that with regard the origins of some of these curious erica species that are that found in western ireland and and nowhere yeah. in between there and spain um do you think yeah. you could exclude or confirm anything from or maybe you could spell it out right yeah yeah so i think what what it's quite clear is that um each of those populations are quite um um individual uh, events so uh that uh, colonization should be recent and um there's a hypothesis that that they, this could be uh, introduced by people by traders or uh, there is even one um very well developed hypothesis of um, the smugglers that uh, used to trade between Spain and Western Ireland and how they, uh, this is from um, Micheline Shiki Skeffington, who's a, 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 an Irish botanist and, and has suggested this with, uh, with Nick Scott and both of them, uh, they have published um uh, a couple of papers uh, explaining this this hypothesis um we we of course we can uh, uh, confirm but this could be this would be their hypothesis i'm going to take a, a, a picture stepping back to, to to document everyone being here thank you Jaime. Um, and I think at this point we, 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 we've got a question from Dirk. Dirk, go ahead, please. Or do or is that hand still up from ages ago? No. Yes, on. yes, my hand is up. Um, just a comment. Um, one should go and have a look at the um, northerly uh, dispersal. Um, let me just switch my volume up. Um, if one looks at the post glacial dispersion of oak trees from uh, those areas in Spain and from the whole of the Alpine chain in the northerly direction. Uh, there is evidence of the, particularly of the chloroplast genotypes migrating directly north. And um, so some of the genotypes that are in Spain right in the west of Spain or in the west of Ireland and the west of then Scotland right up in the north and um, Erica's have got tiny seeds so they can also disperse by wind and I would um, be careful about uh, a human dispersal route I would certainly just dis not discount wind dispersal you must remember that the Erica's migrated down or dispersed down to the Cape uh, yeah. by means of wind dispersal. There's no doubt that that is the way that they moved. So I wouldn't discount wind dispersal. Yes. Um, so, uh, right, we, we, we don't discard that option. Um, the seeds of these species are, are tiny, but still is a long way from, from uh, from from Galicia to uh, to Western Ireland. Uh, and another uh, possible hypothesis would be uh, birds. Um, these very small seeds could be trapped in the feathers of those birds. Uh, we don't discard them, but for me, um, the most uh, plausible explanation is a human. Uh, assisted um, uh, transport because there are records of the use of headers uh, by these uh, traders by, and, and smugglers. So uh, everything uh, makes sense. Uh, if, 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 if wind alone uh, caused the, that uh, pattern, um, why not anywhere else, anywhere in between or any other uh, place that the seeds could have uh, reached? Mm. Anyway, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good 
uh, it's, it's a good thing to, to discuss and think about.